Welcome to On Second Thought. I am Brianna Moore, co-hosting today. Thank you for joining us for William J. Wagner gives you reason to have second thoughts. Today, it's Michael Warnke. Michael. Well, welcome to On Second Thought. Yeah, Mr. Warnkin, so you filed your lawsuit, they filed a rebuttal, and then you answered their rebuttal, and it looks like you pretty well smacked them down pretty hard. Can you, can you tell us briefly? How hard you beat him down and what he didn't even respond to because you beat him down? Pound him down. Well, basically, uh, I guess, you know, in their motion to dismiss, I think the most telling aspect is what they didn't want to discuss. And in none of the briefs do they mention the fact that, um, that no assembly member has lost in four terms. I think that's the most telling thing. But beyond that, they don't want to talk about issues such as the districts being 475,000. The attorney general in his brief, he, he briefly uh, mentions the fact that the districts are getting be, uh, bigger, so therefore they're be becoming less competitive. He does mention that. So it's, it's, it's pretty telling how my opposition is really trying to avoid a lot of the issues here. On a couple of your points in your first rebuttal, they didn't even answer them on their rebuttal to your first rebuttal. Didn't yeah, that, that's... Uh, what, that, was, what were two of those things? They just didn't even want to go there anymore. Well, they, they put down a case, uh, Lugin versus a uh, wildlife group, and basically they say there's three three standards you have to meet to to have a case be heard. And it's uh, the first one is that, you know, you have to show that you're damaged in a, in a concrete way. And, and number two, you have to show that something you're complaining about is what damaged you. And the third thing is how will the court, you know, fix things? And I say, okay, well... The districts keep getting bigger, so therefore my vote loses value. And the fact that no one will increase the representation is what affects me. And then the third standard was, how can the court in a, in a decision fix that? And I say, well, if you increase representation, my <laughs> my vote will be worth more. And they don't mention that. And they just say in their second rebuttal, well, um, you know, he didn't meet the standard. <laughs> the guy is, you know, from his own website, uh, Nossman.com, I guess his name is John Kennedy, uh, on his on his website, it says he's a super lawyer. So, the uh, um, it, it's it's interesting because the state of California, we're about ready to. You know, I guess we actually have started issuing IOUs. They're starting starting to go out, and they hire to defend the case a super lawyer. And I guarantee you, he's not being paid in IOUs. I mean, it's interesting that I am sending petitions, and I'm suing because you know the legislature's duty is to take petitions. It's it's uh, a right that we've had for centuries, and. Instead of answering the petitions, they're hiring a lawyer, a high, a high money lawyer, to uh, to defend their right to ignore us. So, <laughs> <laughs> you're pretty confident you're going to win this, aren't you? Uh, I think we have to be cautious, and and uh, I I think I think I've won the argument. You know, have we won in, in courts on Wednesday? Wednesday, 10 a.m. And uh, Department at, 25 uh, on the 21st, I think. Yeah. On the 21st at 10 a.m. U.S. District Court in Sacramento, Sacramento, Department 25. I Street. And you're going to stand up and make your own all arguments against those big shot lawyers. I guess so. They, they hired some pretty big guns to take me on. But you know. the Attorney General seemed to lean in your way and give you some deference. Like, like it, looked, it felt like that in certain ways. Uh, there were certain aspects to his pleadings that at least he acknowledged what some of the problems were. He didn't discuss all of them, but the Assembly's attorney didn't properly characterize the case. On my rebuttal, I said, well, the Attorney General, what he said, the way he summed up the case, it was a little more accurate. So, you know, so I'm telling the judge, well, you know, not in my own words, I'm saying this is what the Attorney General said, and, you know, he's, he's, actually, <laughs> he's actually being more accurate. So it's, it's interesting. I've obviously touched a nerve here. There's a lot of attorneys that you can hire just to defend a case. If they're hiring somebody who's as well experienced, you know, this firm's got uh, law offices in Sacramento, in San Francisco, in Washington, D.C., Austin, Texas, Irvine, Orange County, uh, L.A., this they're is, all over the place. This is no small firm. They practice in the federal courts regularly. They're out to defend the assembly's right to get reelected without any serious <laughs> challenges and ignore the people's redress of grievances. Exactly. Did I say that right? Yeah, that's 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 more or less the more or less the thing. And the and, and the one concession. And we the people ought to be angry about that, shouldn't yeah, we? Yeah. Well, it's outrageous. I mean, one representative for every four hundred seventy-five thousand. I mean, you know, basically the founder suggested three thousand. You know, they they said thirty thousand is representation, forty thousand is tyranny, and yet at the state level we have in the lower chamber one rep for every 480,000, which is 12 times tyranny. 12 times federal tyranny, not just regular tyranny. I mean, it's just out of control. So did John Kennedy, the attorney for this hotshot law firm, 
what did he say to your argument that the Federalist Papers say this and the Constitution said 30,000? He just ignores it. It's, it's tracked to the point where he's blue in the face. I mean, it's almost like you can see like a guy saying, no, 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 the federal courts can't enter this. And I rebut him and basically say the body of law in which uh, courts get into apportioning cases is vast. There are tons of cases, starting from Baker versus Carr, but I even go, I found a case that, uh, that was decided in the, uh, I want to say the 1820s, and it was by John Marshall, a unanimous Supreme Court, and he says it's indisputable the notion of having a large district of people without a representative. And to be taxed. It's a tax case. Uh, basically, a, a man says that he, since he's in Washington, D.C., and at the time they didn't have a representative. And he said, so since they don't have a representative, he argues under Article 1, Section 2, that he shouldn't have to pay taxes. And Marshall, under the unanimous Supreme Court, in his opinion, says, well, that's not to be presumed. He says, you know, the power of Congress to, to uh, lay and collect taxes is general, and that means even the territories. He says, however, it, be, it would be more in the spirit of our Constitution that they'd be afforded a representative. And they do have a non-voting representative. Now they do, and then it sounds like that there may be even a, a move to give them a vote in this section. So it might be, you know, our, our, uh, we might be actually increasing the U.S. House, which is, you know, that's an interesting thing. Part of the point, though, is he said it's in, in the spirit of cannot be de denied, especially when our revolution was over the issue of taxation without representation. That's what we have right now. We have 80 members, which is what we had in 1854. You know, when we had 207,000 people in the state, each rep in the assembly probably had a, on average 2,500 people and today we have that same 80 150 years later and the districts are 475,000. I mean it, it's or they've hired you know a powerful law firm to argue that point and, and, and say you know almost to a certain extent you, you shouldn't have a right to a representative you know that's not exactly what they're saying but they're what they're saying I shouldn't be able to have my case heard well they've determined on their own that that, that I shouldn't be able to have my petitions heard and, and you know the irony is the federal judges are hearing it now <laughs> so what's happening is because the legislature doesn't deal with their petitions, the judges have to deal with it. And, and you know, one of the things I was reading the other day is the U.S. Supreme Court got 8,000 cert petitions last year. They said it was actually down, but 8,000, you know, so they heard, I think, 60 of them or, you know, 60 or 70 of those cases. So, you know, I think of the 8,000, probably more than just those 60 had a grief that really needed to be redressed. I think the reality is the U.S. Supreme Court cannot handle 8,000 cases. And what's not happening is the legislature's not dealing with it. They're certainly dealing with somebody's petitions. Somebody's getting getting something. People you know, will give a large contribution to for the election for nothing. Yes, you right. don't you don't give. You know, if you're giving two and five thousand dollars, it's not for being good citizens. And, and you know, the ironic thing is, if you look at these donor lists, like I've looked at Pedro Navas' donors list and a few others, the number of what I would call John Q. citizens. You know, someone like you or someone like me, you know, who doesn't necessarily have a lot, they're, they're not really giving money. It, it's, uh, you know, big companies, BNSF, right. uh, uh, the nurse, you know, the number of PACs. I mean, this PAC, that PAC, the AG PAC. The, but uh, not the average yeah, common no, person. Yeah, no, no. So I think Pedro is on a transportation committee. So the number of transportation companies that are giving. Chris. You know, and I'm not saying anything bad about them. The reality is they have to worry if a law gets passed, they get damaged. And it, and it could set them back financially. It can hurt them. The problem is, the counterside is just you and I and, and most other common citizens, you know, if a law written one way can help them, that's not necessarily wrong, but if it can hurt us, well, that is bad. And we don't have a say. We don't have access. And, and the greater issue that then becomes there may be a way that the transportation uh, people who are, you know, giving money, uh, there might be a way to write the law that won't hurt you and me. If there's right. a way that you can write a law that can satisfy all interests, but that's not happening. It's clearly, you know, one set of interests, and it ain't mine. <laughs> well, thank you for this interview. Michael Warren, can filer of the lawsuit that could change politics in America. <laughs> I'm William Wang for On Second Thought, and On Second Thought cameras will be in Sacramento, and I'll be in the courtroom getting the scoop that Sean Hannity missed. It's William Wagner. Catch us next time.